the Damon Runyon Theater. Once again, the Damon Runyon Theater brings you another story by the master storyteller, Damon Runyon. And this one, Lillian. And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. What I always say is that Wilbur Willett is nothing but a very lucky guy. Because what is it but luck when one morning I am helping him to his hotel? It is snowing and it is a very pretty sight. But I am not able to pay too much attention to the beauties of nature, what with having to guide Wilbur. Wilbur, it seems, like always, has got himself to the point where the little animals will soon take over. In fact, as we are walking along, he is talking funny. Are we near the summit, Broadway? Huh? Summit? What summit, Wilbur? We will be the only men to reach the top of Mount Everest. We are walking on 46th Street. Where are all the Tibetans? They are all in bed. All good little Tibetans are in bed at this hour. Now, you be a good little Tibetan, huh? Do not call me name. Oh, Wilbur, I am trying to get you to your hotel. Oxygen. Break out the oxygen. It's this way, Wilbur. We are just around the corner from where you live. Ah, the only men to reach the summit of Mount Everest and live. Sure, sure. The newspapers will be full of it. Now, just a couple more steps, and you can stand on the summit and wave at the people down below. What people? We're lost, Broadway. Lost in a trackless waste of snow and ice. Send up a flare. I will send up a flock of rockets later. You're a good guy, Broadway. A mm. real good guy. Broadway. What? What is the matter? Get your gun ready. I what? Wilbur, I never carry a Roscoe. <laughs> I never... Look! A leopard. What? On 46th Street? There it is, a black leopard about the spring. Never mind. The elephants will get him. I tell you, there's a leopard. What? Oh, that is nothing but a little black kitten lost in the snow. It's a leopard. Okay, a leopard, and you should know. Now, leopard. I am going to take it home with me. Think of having a real live leopard in my room. Sure. Okay, Wilbur, it is your leopard. Pick him up and leave us go. Broadway, I may start a zoo. <laughs> this is only the beginning. Only the beginning. <laughs> And Wilbur is right. This is only the beginning. And what happens because of the little black kitten is something that everybody on the stem talks about. Like I say before, Wilbur is a very lucky guy. And why he is, I will tell you in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Lillian. Well, it comes up the next day, and I get to thinking about Wilbur and wondering how he is feeling. So I drop around to the Hotel de Brussels where he stays. I go to his room, and the scene is as follows. Sit down, Broadway. I'll, I'll get out of bed as soon as the room settles down. You are a little shaky, huh? Uh, a little. What time is it? Three o'clock. Afternoon, that is. Yeah. I did it again, huh? Uh-huh. Ah, great guy, me. Broadway! What is that? What is what? There are two green eyes looking at me from under the blanket. Two green eyes and a pair of black ears. Oh, sure. That is a leopard. Get out! Now, you see, you are out of bed, and real quick. What the devil is that thing doing in my bed? You put him there. Last night, you pick it up. You say it is a leopard. Oh. Oh, then it's alive and real. Uh Uh-huh. Here. There you are. What was I doing with the kitten? Last night, it is a leopard. I do not argue with you. I see. Cute little thing, huh? Well, the way I look at it, black cats bring bad luck. (laughs) So what else could happen to me? Here, puss. Here, baby. Here. Ouch! Why, you little... Broadway, did you see that? Maybe it has got leopard blood in it after all. That was a neat left that catches you with. <laughs> Spunky little devil and black as ink and as sleek as... As what, Wilbur? Oh, reminds me of someone. Black hair, green eyes, and unpredictable. So? Anybody I know? No. You never knew, Lillian. Oh, somebody you know. Yeah, yeah, some years ago. 
Okay, from now on, your name is Lily. That is a very funny name for a cat. <laughs> it fits. Well, what can I do about feeding this animal? What do cats eat? Milk, I guess. Have you got any? Me? <laughs> no, I guess not. Huh? You suppose it'd like uh, some of that? What? On the dresser. Wilbur, I know very little or practically nothing about cats. But it seems to me that feeding Lily and that stuff will turn her into a leopard for sure. Look what it does to you. Last night you are climbing Mount Everest. Oh, well, I hope Lillian doesn't mind if I have my breakfast. There is a coffee shop downstairs. Yeah, this will do. Well, but why do you not lay off the stuff? Why not? <laughs> uh, ask Lillian. I do not wish the whole conversation with a cat. There are citizens who might think I am peculiar. I didn't mean this, Lillian. Oh, oh, the other one? Yes, the other one. Someday I'll tell you about a Broadway. In the meantime, is to Lillian the cat. Both of them. Well, this is the first inkling anybody has of why Wilbur Willard is such a bottle smasher. Now, he has got class. He is a singer in the hot box. Personally, I am not affected by his singing, but the dolls who come there practically fall on the floor when he does his stuff. However, that is not here or any place, because I am telling you about Lillian, the cat. Now, Lillian grows to be a very tough cat, and does not like dogs, and takes to putting that dislike into active service. Then it comes up one night at the hot box, Wilbur is finished singing, and I am in his dressing room when there is a knock at the door. Get that for me, will you, Broadway? Sure. Uh, Broadway. Well, 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 Harry the horse. Come on in, Harry. I uh, wish to see Wilbur. Is he around? Sure, sure. Hi, Harry. I am not so good, and it is your fault. Mine? Yes. You own a cat. Lillian? That is no name for a cat that grabs a Pekingese by the neck and drags it around. Lillian does that? Lillian does. And the peak belongs to my doll who puts the blast on me to catch up with Lillian. My, my, Lillian is a very active cat. Wilbur, that is a dangerous animal you are keeping. Sooner or later, it will give up carrying peaks around and will take the carrying off citizens. That is not good. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Lillian ought to be put in the East River with a sinker on it. Oh, I, I can't do that, Harry. Listen, I do not wish my doll to put any more blast on me. She is very sore. Now, I am talking to you as one guy to another. Sure, but I'm very fond of Lillian. And I am very fond of my doll. And she is very fond of that peak. In fact, I am not so sure that I am number one. Harry, sooner or later, Lillian will leave me. Not the way you feed that cat, Wilbur. Lillian has got a soft touch and knows it. Fickle. Just like Lillian. Maybe a lot of you guys wonder why I hit the stuff the way I do. It's the only time I... I forget... Lillian? Lillian. I am sorry, but things have got past me. I'll tell you about it. Maybe you'll understand. Yeah, sit down, Harry. Hey, my doll is waiting for me to bring her back a cat scalp. It won't take long. Have one with me? Mm, all right. Broadway? No, thanks. Maybe you never heard of Willard and Whittington. I hear of Willard, you. But who was Whittington? Lillian Whittington. Oh. We had a good act. I sang, she danced. I guess we were about ready for the big time. I was in love with her. I had a funny idea. She was in love with me, too. Until one night after we closed in Baltimore. We were booked for Buffalo, opening two nights from then. I went to Lillian's dressing room to see her. Lil! Oh, Lil, where are you? Getting dressed. Oh, ha-ha. <laughs> Not bad tonight, huh? Say, Lil, I've been thinking you ought to take another encore. I'm quitting the act, Will. Now, with another encore, you could... What? I said I'm... I'm quitting the act. <laughs> You're kidding. No. What are you talking about, Lil? Just what I said. Well, what brought this on? It's been coming on a long time. Why? I don't like the stage. Oh, oh, oh you're just nervous, Lil. I'm not. Get another partner? Now, look, Lil, I, I still think you're kidding. And if you are, I don't like the gag. It's not a gag. 
You're a good guy, Will, but I want more than a good guy with a pleasant voice. We'll be in big time in another couple of months. I'm not going to wait. Well, now, wait. You threw this at me all of a sudden. I'm still not sure what you're talking about. I'll put it on the line. I'm going to get married. Married? You? That's impossible. Well, what's the idea? You don't even give me a hint, then all of a sudden... Why well, go through a long routine, say it, get it over with. Sure, sure, say it and get it over with. Just like that. Don't get dramatic. You're a singer, not an actor. Why, you, I pulled you out of a cheap chorus line and gave you a break. I know that. I appreciate it. Like a shot in the head, you do. If it hadn't been for me, you'd be still hoofing in the back row. You'd still be grabbing midnight slow trains for the next burg and grabbing hamburgers and elbow okay, joints. Okay, okay, so you give me a break now. I'll give it myself one. And what about me? You'll get along. Get another partner. I'm not talking about the act. I'm talking about me. What about you? I... I love you. Don't say it, Will. Why not? Little look at me. No. Maybe you love me, huh? Yeah. Well, then... Look, when you give up the act, you get another job. I've been in this all my life. I hate it. I don't. Well, that's a difference. What do you want me to do? Well, I, I hit you hard tonight because I wanted... Because I wanted to make you say that. You look, you get in some other business, I'll stick with you. This is my business. Not mine. I just don't like it, Will. Maybe you think you're worth all the years I spent getting ready for something big. Now, just because you don't like the stage, I gotta play puppy dog and tag at your heels. You said you loved me. Sure. Well, then think of me. That's all I ever did. Quit then, Will. No. Well, it's either me or... Or this... Maybe we wouldn't get along, Lil. Maybe we wouldn't. Well, we can't. No, if just... forget it. Have a good time and don't stay up too late. So long, Lil. So, that's the way it was. She went away someplace. I never saw her again. My, that is a sad story. Uh-huh. Now, you mark my words. The cat will do the same thing. This Lillian will do just what the other one did. I gave her everything. Picked her up, didn't I, Broadway? You do, out of the snow. But sooner or later, Lillian will walk out on me. Mm, I see what you mean, Wilbur. Dolls are all alike. Only Lillian is not a doll cat. Makes no difference. Lillian is like Lillian. All right, Wilbur, I will leave you keep the cat. Personally, I only wish she would drag my doll's peak far away the next time. <laughs> You're a good guy, Harry. I feel very sorry for you. You are a wonderful person. You are a shining light in the darkness of this mad dog age. Isn't he, Broadway? Well, he is pretty well lighted now. Harry, let us go and find Lillian. Let us. I love all cats. I love you. It is mutual. Leave us go. My, my. Now I have two Tibetans to take home. So Lillian stays with Wilbur. And pretty soon everybody on the stem knows the story. Now what happens later because of Lillian and how things turn out for Wilbur makes quite a story. And I will tell you about it in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Lillian. Like I say, Wilbur Willard keeps Lillian. And Lillian develops a peculiar personality. It seems that whenever Wilbur is a Tibetan, Lillian is all right. But when Wilbur is himself, the cat is very fretful and will have nothing to do with anybody, except to let fly with a claw now and then, thereby mutilating citizens and causing Wilbur some trouble. But Wilbur keeps Lillian until one night when I get him to his hotel. Lillian! Lil! Broadway... Where is my beautiful leopard? How do I know? Lillian! Do you leave her here? Always. She promised to wait. She promised. Yeah, I can imagine. 
Raises her paw and swears to it, huh? My wonderful, beautiful leopard is gone. Oh, God. She will come back. I told you. I told you. She left me just like... Like... Oh, my goodness, Wilbur, you are a big boy. You don't know what Lillian meant to me. Look, maybe she goes out to bring in a few peaks and the like. Maybe she goes hunting. After all, she only clears this part of town of dogs. A searching party. We'll organize a searching party and, if necessary, cable Scotland Yard. Okay, Wilbur, I will send the cable. Now, you rest, because if we are going to climb more mountains, you will need your strength. Uh, Where are you going? Somewhere in this wilderness, my leopard needs. Look, Wilbur. Wait a minute. Look. What is it? Lillian. Huh? Where? Come here. Well, well, well. A little doll. She's got a Lillian. That is a cute little kid. She stole Lillian. Hey, you. Hey, kid. Wait a minute. Come on, Broadway. Sure. Hey, woman, where are you going with my leopard? This is no leopard. It's a pussycat. I will not argue with a woman. Hey, wait a second, Wilbur. Where do you get the kitty, honey? Our door was open and the kitty came in. Fickle. She has a perfectly good home and she tries to get in other people's rooms. I like this kitty. She's real soft. Look, Wilbur, Lillian is rubbing her face against the doll's chin. Yes, I see. Where is your room, little girl? My name's Margie. Yeah, Margie, where is your room? Right there. We moved in today, Daddy and I. Well, maybe we better take you back in, Margie. Your daddy might be worried. He's sleeping. Haven't you got a mother? Yes, but my daddy took me away. Ah. Well, but this kid does not look like the type that is used to living in places like this. I used to live in a big house far away. I like this kitty. It is my leopard. Have you got another one? Uh, no. So you like the kitty, huh? Yes. Come on, honey. Better go back to your room. This one is it, you say? Yes, sir. My daddy's sleeping. The door's unlocked. Uh-huh. Please don't wake my daddy. Broadway. Yeah? Come here. Hmm. Out like a light. Yeah. Reminds me of somebody I know. I was lonesome. I was glad when the kitty came in. Sure, Margie. Well, what do we do, Broadway? What can we do? Margie. Yes, sir? Would you like to keep the kitty for a while? Yes. May I? Sure, sure. But you better stay in your room until your daddy <clears throat> wakes up. Come on, Broadway. Yeah. Uh, so long, Margie. We, we will see you again. Do... Do I look like that, Broadway? No. Not quite. That poor little kid. Yeah. But uh, you are going to let her keep Lillian? I told you Lillian's fickle. She'll leave the kid just like she left me. <laughs> So, that is the way it goes. Wilbur goes right on the way he always does, and Lillian divides her time between Wilbur and Margie. It is one night after the show at the hot box. Like always, Wilbur is more than somewhat mulled up. I am helping him get out of a shirt that he puts on backwards when there's a knock at the door. Ah, the men have come tonight, me. Let them in, Broadway. Sure. Come on in. Good evening, everybody. Oh, hello, Harry. Oh, I'm glad to see you here, Wilbur. I'm glad to see you, Sir Lancelot. I bring somebody with me? Pay no attention. Wilbur is not himself. Oh, well, well, like I say, I am glad to see you here, Wilbur, because if you are home, it is bad. What do you say, Nave? Yeah, just call me Harry. Harry, what are you talking about? Well, not more than five minutes ago, I passed the Hotel de Brussels. My summer residence, which I use in winter also. When spring and fall. Harry, everybody passes the Hotel de Brussels on the way here. What is odd about that? Well, it is odd tonight because the place is on fire. What? Finin' like a celluloid collar. My, my, let's go see it. I'm a little firefly, and I need a light. Holy mackerel. They think everybody is out, and Big Sam gives odds of five to one that the place does not last more than half an hour. Leave us go, men. Yeah, leave us go. So the three of us head for the Hotel de Brussels. And when we get there, the whole place is blazing. And all the fire engines in New York are there trying to keep the rest of the buildings around from catching. They give up hope for the hotel. 
Then Wilbur looks at it and says... It's just like a fairy palace all lighted up, isn't it, Broadway? Oh, sure. It is also hot. They are not even trying to save it. You know, I'll bet Lillian would like to see this. I think I'll give her. Yes, I think I'll give her. She must be in that... Hey, you dope, come back here. Where is he going? Hey, somebody stop that guy. Somebody stop him. Look, he pushes right... Wilbur! Wilbur, stop! Come back here! Broadway, he gets through. They are so surprised, they let him go. Well, that is the last we will ever see of Wilbur, will it? It is the last we will ever see of him the way we see him last. Did we get everyone off? Did they? Huh? I, I do not... No, lady, uh, they think so. I've got to get through. Oh, no, not you, too. Please, let me go. Let me go. My goodness, does everyone in New York wish to get broiled? <laughs> hey, 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 there comes Wilbur. What? He gets out? What has he got? Lillian. He <laughs> saves the cat. I'm going to report the services to the management. The elevators aren't running. Is everyone out? What? Madam, I am not in the habit of peering into rooms. Do you see anybody else, Wilbur? No, I was too busy getting Lillian. There you are, Lillian. Now you can see the pretty fairy palace all lighted up. Lillian does not seem to like it. Lillian, Lillian, be good. There she goes. Lillian. Well, well, she left me again. Well, there's nothing to do but bring her back. And what happens but Lillian dashes back into the hotel with Wilbur chasing her. It all happens so fast that the firemen and police cannot move. And the last we see of Wilbur, he is going into the hotel after Lily. This time he has gone longer. And this time it does not look like he has got a chance, because the front of the building gives in and blocks the door. We know that this is the last we see of him until... Oh, look! Look, Broadway! Look on the roof! Wilbur! He is singing! He is crazy! The only way he can get down is by jumping into a net! Somebody should catch him in a net a long time ago. Come on, let us go closer. This I have to say. Let us through, please. Let, let us through. That guy up there is a friend of ours. Yes, a brother. Let us through. Now, Wilbur! Jump! You have to jump in the net! I am the only man to jump off the top of Mount Everest! Wilbur! Jump! Please! Jump! It is your only chance! He, he is getting ready. Wilbur! You are all right? Of course. But tell these men they wouldn't have taught me if I hadn't let them. I am a butterfly and very hard to overtake. What do you have there? Lillian. And the kid. Margie. Margie, baby. Well, but the kid is in there, too. Sure. <laughs> Lillian went right to her. But her father? Dead. Uh, Mommy. Oh, my baby. I won't forget this. I won't forget this. Think nothing of it. You come on, dear. You come on. Well, but this is a great Mommy, thing you do. You are a hero. Hero? Well, all I did was look for a blanket to wrap Lillian in. I picked up a blanket, and there was the kid. Nevertheless, you are a hero. And so is Lillian for leading you to the kid. Is that so? Well, well, think of it. Now maybe they will knight her, too. <laughs> So that is the way it turns out. Wilbur is a hero, but Lillian is even more so because nobody ever hears of a cat that rushes back into a burning building to save anybody. Lillian's picture and Wilbur's are all in the papers, and Margie's mother turns out to be quite full of the old taw and gives Wilbur a hunk of it. However, that is not the payoff. And what is, I will tell you in a minute. <laughs> After Wilbur and Lillian get to be heroes, they drop out of sight. In fact, I do not see Wilbur until maybe four or five months later. Then I hear a knock on my door one night, and when I open it, who is it but... Hello, Broadway. Wilbur! My, my, how are you? Oh, great. Say, you are looking wonderful. Sit down. Thanks. Where do you go? Well, I set myself up in business, Broadway, with the money I got. I cannot get over how wonderful you look. Uh... <laughs> yes, yes. I'm on the wagon for good. The night of the fire, when I saw Margie's father there trapped because he couldn't move, I... Well... I see. So you are doing real well, huh? Fine. And uh, what about Lillian? <laughs> Which one? Lillian the cat. Oh, I'll tell you about her. But uh, first, I found the other Lillian. You do? Yes. She never did get married. Until she married me. <laughs> So, now everything's okay. Well, well, congratulations. And now what about Lillian the cat? 
You know, everybody still talks about what a hero she is, rushing back into that burning building to get to Margie. I don't have Lillian anymore, Broadway. No? What becomes of her? Well, remember all that talk about Lillian being a hero? Yeah. Well, it's a lot of malarkey. Remember how she used to have funny spells like I did? Sure. One day okay, the next off her rocker. Well, I used to put a little of my uh, <clears throat> breakfast in her milk. She got to like it. You mean Lillian is a drinker? <laughs> uh, a heavy one. I discovered it by accident. Well, the night of the fire, I picked her up the first time outside Margie's door. The second time, I picked her up in the room because the door was ajar. She went back to lap up what Margie's father spilled out of a bottle. Hmm. Well, well, well. And everybody thinks she is a hero. And all she did was go back for a drink. So where is she now? I gave her to Harry the horse. Harry keeps her pretty well mulled up because when she's in that condition, she leads Harry's dolls, Pekingese, a dog's life. And so ends the famous Damon Runyon story, Lillian. Listen in again next week for... The Damon Runyon Theater. The Damon Runyon Theater with John Brown as Broadway is directed by Richard Sandville and the story is adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. Vern Carstensen is in charge of production. This is a Mayfair production. ¶¶